Ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, such a great pleasure to have you all here. And when I was on city council, I could always count on the support of, uh, of my neighbors and my friends and uh, people, especially in the McBurney Park neighborhood. Uh, what a great community, uh, just a fine group of people. And during uh, the political season and during the time when I was at City Hall, uh, I could always count on you. And I just uh, am so grateful to have all of you here this evening. Uh, what a thrill for me to have Howard Hampton outside of my house on 55 Quebec Street. I think it's wonderful. I'm not going to speak much longer, but I just want to say, Monsieur, Madame, ça m'a fait grand plaisir de vous présenter Monsieur Howard Hampton, le chef du Parti Nouveau Démocratique de l'Ontario, Monsieur Hampton. Well, thank you, Rick. Uh, and, uh, gee, this is not a bad house. I especially like all the color. <laughs> Thank you, everybody, and, and it's great to see so many of you here and uh, on such a, a great evening. And let me tell you uh, why I'm here. First, I'm here because we've got a great candidate, and you know what a great candidate it is. Yeah. We voted for him many times. He's an activist. People know they can count on him, and, and people know the great work he's done on municipal council and throughout the community. And that's why we're going to have a great campaign, why we've already got a great campaign here in Kingston. But there are some other reasons why we're going to have a great campaign. And it has to do with this. People remember from the last election, Dalton McGinty promising, for example, that uh, there weren't going to be any cuts to health care. Promising that... Uh, what the Conservatives had done, delisting certain health care services, wasn't going to happen again. And then immediately after the election, he announces that the government's delisting chiropractic, physiotherapy, and optometry. And who do you think delisting those things hurts the most? It hurts ordinary people the most. It hurts ordinary people the most. And in fact, they don't save the health care any money. In fact, in the longer term, they're probably going to cost us money. I go to an optometrist who points out to me that one of the best ways, one of the first ways that you know that somebody may have uh, be susceptible to stroke or be, may be uh, headed for suffering from diabetes is by irregular vision. Optometrists diagnose that long before anybody else does. And if you don't diagnose it early and people become more seriously ill, it costs the healthcare system a lot of money. People remember those promises and those broken promises. Today, earlier today, we dealt with what I think is the biggest broken promise. When Dalton McGinty looked into the camera and said, I won't raise your taxes. And then hit lower, modest, and middle income people with the biggest tax increase and the most regressive tax increase ever in the history of Ontario. We all want to contribute to the health care system. But you know what? Dalton McGinty's so-called health tax has nothing to do with the health care system. The money goes into the Consolidated Revenue Fund, and it's used for all kinds of things. Recently, some of it was used to uh, finance Dalton McGinty's $32 million pre-election slush fund, where money went out the, door, out the door to cricket clubs and to organizations that are more closely connected to the Liberal Party than they are to any community. Some of that money went to pay for things that are totally unrelated to health care. But people were told this was a health tax. Let me tell you, nothing to do with health, but what it did is it hit lower, modest, and middle-income people harder than anybody. A single-parent mom with two kids earning only $30,000 a year saw her provincial income tax increase by 25%. Meanwhile, remember... Uh, Remember this guy, Tom Parkinson, Dalton McGinty's friend who was head of, head of Hydro One, who got caught padding his expense account and got paid $6 million last year as he left the province? He got paid $6 million, but all he contributed out of that tax, under that tax, was $900. So lower, modest, and middle-income people got hit the hardest. 
people with very high incomes hardly were touched. Today, we announced the New Democrats intend to fix that. We all want to contribute to health care. We all want to contribute to community services. But we should be contributing according to our capacity to contribute. And single parent moms who are trying to live on $30,000 a year shouldn't be hit the hardest. That's right. That's right. And middle and income people, middle income people, classic case. He makes $40,000 a year. She makes $40,000 a year. Their combined tax is over $900. That's wrong. So what we said is we're going to eliminate the tax for someone who has an income under $48,000 a year. And from there on, it will be graduated. But what it means is lower, modest, and middle-income people will get some of that money back. And in, in Peterborough today, I met with a young couple who said, gee, you know, this might give us enough money to pay for our daughter's child care. Because right now, we can't afford to pay for it. And after that, well, maybe it would help us pay back some of our student loans. And after that, gee, maybe it would help us pay the mortgage on our home. This is not frivolous money. It's things that people need, and right now, things that people can't afford. I want to raise another issue. You know, I watched just before Christmas, at just before Christmas, when I think the McGinty government hoped that no one would be watching, no one would be looking. And they ushered in a $40,000 pay raise for the Premier and $30,000 pay raises for many other people. But you know, there was an interesting debate happening at that time. We were, we, as you know, we had begun a campaign to raise the minimum wage. You can't live on eight bucks an hour. You have to have a higher minimum wage. But you know what was so classic? Dalton McGinty stood up and said, Oh, we can't afford to raise the minimum wage to $10 an hour. We can't afford that. He said people will have to wait three years to get a minimum wage of $10 an hour. And then in eight days, he gave himself a $40,000 pay increase. You know what? $40,000 pay increase is more than the average Ontarian working person actually gets paid in a year. And that illustrates again what's wrong. New Democrats say it's time to raise the minimum wage to $10 an hour now so people can make a living. A third issue I want to raise. You know, I grew up in a farming area. And a lot of the people who in that farming area, they didn't have a job outside the farm. You know what that meant? It meant that they and their kids had no dental coverage at all. If you had a good job, if you worked in the paper mill, if you worked on the railroad, if you worked in a government office, you had dental coverage. It was part of the benefit of working. But one of the things I saw was all kinds of kids who had no dental coverage. When I finished university, I went back to that community as a teacher. That was some time later. And I still saw all kinds of kids and parents who had no dental coverage. And I saw what it meant. After a while, poor dental health affects your overall health. Poor dental health has now been linked to things like chronic inflammatory disease, which can basically disable someone. It's been linked to heart attack, stroke, heart disease, and diabetes. Those things cost the healthcare system billions of dollars a year. So New Democrats say, instead of allowing people's dental health to deteriorate, and then their general health deteriorates, and then it costs the health care system potentially billions of dollars, why not invest a little money up front and ensure that every child, every young person in Ontario has access to a basic dental program so that we have good dental health and we save money in the health care system. People say to me, what's the NDP campaign about? I want to be very direct. Our campaign is ensuring that lower, modest, and middle-income people in this province get a fairer deal than they've been getting under either Dalton McGuinty or the Conservatives before that.
People work hard. People contribute to the community. People pay their taxes. And people deserve a fair deal. So, I know how energetic Rick is. I've watched him. I, I've, I've been to Kingston several times. I know what kind of an activist he is. Tell your neighbors. Tell your friends. Tell the people you work with. If they want, if they want to see a fair deal, for all those people who work hard every day, who pay your taxes, contribute to the community, and play by the rules, then Rick Downs is the person to vote for. Because with more New Democrats, we'll be able to get a fair deal for hardworking people in Ontario. Rick Downs. Yeah. Right?